all true crimers, it is crime with Ashley here and I am back with another case. Okay, so I have been researching this case for hours now. It is a Alice in the Wonderhand Wonder Hand. Alice in the Wonderland wormhole, guys. I have a lot of information to give you and you gotta tell me what you think at the end of it because I don't even know what I think. I really don't know what to think. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Wait, I have a couple things to say. Sorry about the watermark on top. Um, sorry if you don't really like the lighting and things that's going on. I'm pretty sure I like it. Let me get some feedback below if you don't mind. If you want to. <laughs> I just want to know that everything's kind of progressing in my channel the way that I want it to. I kind of feel like my um, background's a lot better, my angles, my lighting, everything. Also, we have 71 subscribers now. I'm saying it at the beginning of the video instead of the end, just in case I forget. I love every single one of you, and I'm so excited that you are a part of the channel. <laughs> So on September 28, 2017, in the early morning hours of that day, in Poughkeepsie, New York, there was a shotgun blast. <laughs> there was somebody who was shot in the apartment, and the question on everybody's mind still is, is it self-defense or is it murder? It is cold in here. I didn't think it was that cold. Okay, ignore that. Sorry, that's just uh, my breath. I feel like a dragon. So just let's roll with it. Okay, so a woman named Nikki Adamando shot her husband, Chris Grover, in their um, Poughkeepsie, New York apartment. And she, as soon as she did it, she, in her, just her stocking feet, just in socks, she got into her car with her two small children in the back of it. And she went in the search of police. And how police found her, though, is... Ooh, ooh, wait, hold on. Okay, so I had to make sure that I was going to start it off this way, and I'm going to. So when Nikki Adamando finally flagged down police, um, she was sitting at a red light in her car, and police were behind her. And when the light turned green, she didn't move. So the police officer, Richard Sicily, he put his air horn to get her attention because he thought maybe she wasn't paying attention to the light. And to his surprise, she gets out of the car in just her stocking feet and she runs to him and on his dash cam and on recordings on his car and every, and on his thingy, like his thingy right here, he records everything. And for two hours, two hours, she talks to him and tells him what happens. So because I'm a little bit evil, before I get into what she says happens and more into the crime, I'm going to go backwards a little bit and give you some details about our suspect and victim. Or victim and victim. Who knows? Okay, so Nikki Adamando and Chris Grover both worked in Poughkeepsie, New York at a place called Mr. Todd's Gymnastics. Um, Chris was the head coach there. And according to all of his students that I saw in videos and his boss, his bosses, Marissa and Todd, he was great and his students felt safe with him. He was um, very much loved and they said that he was gentle, he had a gentle soul, and they could not believe the allegations against him. Now, on the flip side, Nicole's family says this was a long time coming because Nicole is gentle and loving and does everything she can for her kids. She's a great mom and she's been abused for a long time. So apparently for years now, Nicole's friends and family have been well aware of bruising on her butt, her back, her face, her arms, her hands, and there's been photographic evidence and video evidence and there's even been said that there's bite marks there's photos of bite marks on her back and um so that was going on for these past couple of years and well for their whole relationship practically and it was well documented but then going back to Chris Grover and the prosecutors of this case and his family 
they say that all of those injuries that have been documented were self-inflicted and Nicole Adamando was manipulating everybody that she knew and just doing this to herself because Chris would never hurt her and he lived for her and her and his kids and he was a great father and husband and he would just never do something like this because now we're gonna get into the crime okay so on September 28th 2017 according to Nicole or Nikki how she is referred to I'll probably switch back and forth like I always do but Nikki she says that her and Chris were in a heated argument and she kept trying to leave but he kept saying no you're not going to go anywhere and somehow he had a gun in the house and child protective services was even involved because there was a loaded gun in the house with children and she was in fear for her safety and her children's safety so she was trying to get out of there according to her and she says that he would not let her leave he was waving the gun around at her and that she needs him and he drops the gun and she gets it and as soon as she points it at him, he's like, you wouldn't do it. And she does it. She shoots him like that. And then she says that as soon as she does it, she freaks out to go get authority. She loads up her kids into the back of her car and off she goes to find police. Now, when police found Chris's body, they went into the apartment. Obviously, once they've heard her story, they went to go see the crime scene. When they found his body, it was said... It was said that Chris was found in the apartment, discovered, laying on the couch with his head propped on a pillow, feet stretched out in front of him, one arm on his chest and one arm by his side. Okay, so if there was a struggle, like Nicole said, why would he fall onto the couch with his head propped on a pillow. Because she says she, did, she didn't touch his body. She just shot him, left, lay as he, he lay, he dropped as he was. It looked to police like he was asleep. So because of this, it was charged obviously, well, not just because of this, but obviously because she admitted to doing it. But because of that and because of the way that he was found, it was immediately charged as self, not self-defense, but it was charged as homicide instead of any sort of self-defense. So, we're getting into a little bit of um, what do you think that she did? Because it's been said that there's women that have definitely, definitely faked domestic violence before because she was described by his family as controlling and what she said went or, you know, you paid the price, whatever that means. But then again, you have Nicole's family saying she wasn't like that and that it was Chris that was like that. But Chris isn't here to defend himself. And I don't, I don't know. The trial, we're going to get into a little bit of the trial next because she's been to trial and I want you to know kind of what happened. I have everything written down. Okay, so before the trial even began, all right, before the trial even began, in April of 2018, Nikki was released from jail due to lack of criminal indictment. So she was arrested when this originally happened, September 28, 2017. But April 2018, she was finally released because of lack of indictment. But then, June 2018, she surrendered voluntarily to jail, to Dutchess County Jail. And then June 6th, she was indicted for... First degree murder, second degree murder, first degree manslaughter, and second degree criminal possession of a weapon. And then August 2018, she was granted bail at $300,000 or a $600,000 bond, whatever that means. But I read it and I'm putting it in there. But a week before Christmas in 2018, she was released on a bond and she got to spend Christmas and New Year's with her family, which thankfully for Nikki, she got that because her mother ended up passing away during this time and she got to attend her funeral service and she got to spend the last few days of her mother's life with her. So now we're going to go forward a little bit more towards the trial that's going to happen because now she's back in jail. So she's back in jail. 
and the defense wanted all video and voice recordings of Nikki talking to the police for those two hours that I mentioned thrown out. Now, that's a little bit sketchy. Why would they want that, you know? Like, why would the defense want that thrown out? You know, that feels like a prosecutor thing, but I definitely read defense. I hope that I got that wrong. Maybe somebody can fact check me, but I actually checked two different sites that I'm gonna link below. And it said that the defense wanted all video evidence and recordings to police thrown out. But um, on January 2nd, the judge ruled that the, fitted, the footage had to be shown. Why, do, why can't I talk? So the trial began March 2008, March 2008, March 18, 2019. Y'all, I am struggling. I am so sorry that <laughs> this is happening. I promise I'm trying so hard. I just, my handwriting's horrible. It's like reading chicken scratch. I definitely should have been a doctor. I miss my calling. So the trial began March 18, 2019. And after 14 days of testimony and three days of jury deliberation, eight women and four men reject Nikki's self-defense and charge self her self-defense claim and charge her with criminal possession of a weapon and second degree murder. Nikki will be eligible for, for <laughs> Hi. Okay, Nikki will be eligible for parole in 2036. Real quick, I want to put this in here. I actually am supposed to wear glasses. These these bad boys right here. See, look at that. That's horrible. Nobody wants to see that. So I actually suffer quite a lot to read that for you guys. And I wanted you to know that because I don't want you to think, wow, she can't read and she can't read her writing. Her writing, her writing must be horrible. It's, it's not that bad. You can read it. It's just, I need glasses because I'm literally blind as a bat. Okay, so back to what I was saying. I pretty much told you guys all the facts of everything. Um, she has bruises and photographic evidence of all of this, but he was found laying on the couch with his hand on his chest and one by his side. So, I don't think she was making it up. This is my opinion. This is my opinion. I don't think that she was making up anything, really, but I feel like in that particular instance, it was not self-defense. I feel like she was tired of it, and she had a moment where she thought she could, you know, be free of him. And instead of actually saying that where she would definitely go to jail, she said self-defense. And that's that's really what I think. I think that it all happened. I think he abused her. And I think that she had a moment where he was asleep and she took it. And instead of actually admitting to it, she freaked out and is going with her self-defense. And the jury found her guilty of second degree murder and criminal possession of a weapon. So the trial, which I'm going to link down below in a podcast. I'm not going to talk about the entire trial because that would be really long. <laughs> That'd be a long, a long video. So I'm going to link that down below if you'd like to listen to the trial. But I mean, it ended with her being charged, and she's not going to be eligible for parole until 2036. But that's not even really the end, because she actually has a whole 25 supporters in a group, the last that anybody knew. 25 supporters in this group. But in the group, they're kind of a little bit of the powerful women, and I haven't seen any of their names. I just keep saying supporters. But they are trying to raise money for her to have an appeal so that she can be released early so that she doesn't have to wait for parole in 2036. I think maybe I can't talk because, like, my dragon breath is really distracting me. I need to get a heater, you guys. I remember, remember I told you guys this is like a back porch thing. It doesn't have any insulation. It's winter. <laughs> My whole house in there is like steamy warm and I'm over here just you Do you see that? This is for you guys. I do this for you. <laughs> okay, so that is the end of this video and I hope that you enjoyed. I'm going to link all of my research below like I always do. I really want to hear you guys' opinions. I want to know if you think that it is self-defense as 
Nikki claims, or if it's murder. Oh, oh, before I go, oh my God, I almost forgot. I literally wrote this down for you guys. I wanted to add this in. This is for your brains. I wanted to say noggins, but that's brain. That, that's barely Siri. Okay, so <clears throat> this is Ashley. This is for your brains, guys. This is brain food. We're going to go with brain food. So, Marissa and Todd of the Mr. Todd's Gymnastics made a Facebook post talking about both Nikki and Chris. So, first off, they wrote about Chris or their joint account. I'm not sure who wrote it because they say they talk in the first person. I don't really know how to begin this post, nor do we feel this is real. Okay, we feel so. Our bodies are numb, the tears keep flowing, stick to our stomachs, and so many other feelings still in our disbelief and can't figure out why this is all happening. Our head coach, Chris, was taken from us yesterday, and my thoughts go out to his family. And then, on a comment on the post, it was said that Chris and Nikki touched so many lives at the gym, and our thoughts are with her and her family as well. That was the day after the shooting happened. So, like I said, there's two sides to every story, but one person isn't here to tell their side, and it's up to you what you really think, to be honest. But again, she is in prison right now, serving her sentence. Serving her sentence. Why does that always happen? I choke. I choke. I thought I was going to get through a video. I thought I was going to get through a video. Okay. <laughs> so I'm done choking. I'm going to swallow. And <laughs> that is it, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed my video. And I hope that you come back to see me. And I love you guys. Have a great Thanksgiving, which is on Thursday. Eat lots of food for me. Let me know what you guys have below. Let me know what you guys are going to have for Thanksgiving dinner down below if you like. And I am going to practice on my talking before I do another video for sure. <laughs> All right. Bye. I love you guys so much.